a gift that I was gifted by a fan that goes by Kurt87. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. They bought me this singer accessory kit, which comes with nine or so different singer accessories for my sewing machine, including a blind hem, um, a double needle, an overcasting stitch, a, not a blind hem, a blind stitch, a rolled hem. There's so much in here, so we're gonna go over everything that is in this kit in honor of Kurt87, but also because I wanna show you all the new things that I can do with my single sewing machine. Because as we know, I have a serger which has a twin needle in it, but I don't have a twin needle for my singular sewing machine, so everything in here is gonna be like doing it for the first time on my machine. I've done it on other machines, I'm pretty sure. Well, not everything, but I've had different pedal foots be on machines and use them. So I know I've used some things. Are they in this kit? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's get started. The first foot pedal I'm going to use is the blind hem, which has a knob on the side to adjust the depth of the hem for the stitch. To put the foot pedal on, you're going to release the other foot pedal with pressing the lever and then lining the foot pedal's bar up with the catch bar on the machine. And then sometimes you have to click that button that you release with but sometimes you don't, sometimes they just click it. The first step of doing a blind hem stitch is to do a regular straight stitch hem, which is just setting your machine to the base stitch it is, which is usually zero or one, depending on your machine. Then this is what the straight stitch should come out looking like. And once that is done, we will be folding it over to face the good side and sewing the blind hem stitch on the bad side. For the blind hem stitch, I'm going to switch my machine to 9. This is my blind hem stitch. Please look at your stitch guide for your blind hem stitch. After everything is set up, we're going to start doing the blind stitch. If this is your first time doing it, I would suggest playing around with it a bit before understanding what you want to do on your official garment. And then this is what the blind hem stitch looked like. Now, it's not perfect, but it is my first time kind of using this pedal foot, so it's gonna take some work for me to get used to it. The next foot is going to be the cording foot. You can tell this foot by the three different notches. This is to hold up to three different types of thread or cording. To sew the thread I'm using instead of cording in, we're going to set the machine to stitch number five. This is a zigzag stitch that will cover across the three separate threads. To thread all of the cording or the thread into the pedal foot, we're going to start by moving what is going through the needle out of the way, and then slowly but surely adding one thread or cording at a time, making sure they stay in their own individual notch. After or before, you can tie a knot of the cordings together, so that way they do not move around and fall out between sewing or after if in case it's not secure enough. And then when it comes to sewing, we're going to sew the zigzag stitch just like normal. If you would like, you can also get a zigzag stitch that goes in between each individual cording or goes across all three or whatever your preference is. After we're all done with sewing, this is what the cording thread looks like. I honestly, The next pedal foot is the straight stitch. My straight stitch that is aligned with the straight stitch is one. If I don't have a straight stitch aligned with the straight stitch foot pedal, then the needle will go down on the middle part of the foot pedal and break. So please be careful and please double check by putting your wheel down instead of just hitting the button to put your needle down. And then to sew, we're just going to sew like regular, making sure that nothing gets caught or anything, just like typical. 
And then this is what it ends up looking like. Next up is the overcasting stitch. This is going to go against the edge of our fabric. My machine's overcasting stitch is number six. Please refer to your machine for your overcasting stitch. Now to do the overcasting stitch, we're going to adjust our fabric to be against the black part of the foot pedal. This is going to secure that we will sew against the edge of our fabric and not the middle of our fabric. This is what it looks like as we see the beginning is a little off but the end is on the edge. Next up is the satin stitch which is typically used for embroidery but I'm going to test both regular stitches and embroidery stitches on it today. For the embroidery stitch that is a number 24 on my machine. And we start with the regular stitch which goes pretty smoothly. and stitched a little faster and the silk didn't get caught or anything so I think it was a win. And then this is what the straight stitch looks like. And then this is what the embroidery stitch looks like. Next up is the gathering foot pedal. This is another one that we have to screw off the attachment and add the gathering attachment. And then to make sure that my gather is visible and obvious, I am elongating my stitch length as much as possible. With sewing, and especially gathered sewing, you want to make sure that you're guiding the fabric and not pulling the fabric. And then this is what the gather at the end looks like. Next up is the even feed or walking foot. This is another one that has to be screwed on. It is a larger attachment. This attachment has to be screwed on with the lever part going above onto the needle screw area. Once we are sure that everything is set up perfectly, we begin sewing and this should push the two fabric layers together so that way they do not move off of each other and keeping them evenly layered no matter how heavy the fabric should get. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Not a straight stitch, but the layers of fabric are evenly stitched together. Next up is the free motion, otherwise known as the darning, and the most commonly used in free-handed quilting. To start off with sewing, you must screw this attachment on, but also cover your dog feet. Whether that's lowering them or covering them with a plate, you don't want them pushing and pulling your fabric around. I just did a quick swivel around to test it out, and this is kind of what it turned out to be. One of the other attachments that came in this kit is the twin needle. This would allow me to sew two lines instead of one while only taking up one needle slot, 
While it's very handy, we will be doing this in another video because I have a serger and we'll be going over all the different ways you can use the twin needle and if or if not, it can work in other machines. And the last attachment that was included is the narrow rolled hem attachment. This would allow me to sew a finer hem on garments that are meant to have like a wave, like a skirt or flowy pants. We will also be going over this in another video just because I have another couple hem attachment parts that I did not include in this video because they were not included in the kit. And we will also be going over the blind hem in depth and changing it up and testing it out to show you all the possibilities that can happen with a blind hem. Okay y'all, so that is everything in the Singer accessory set from Kurt87. Thank you again, I really appreciate it. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything that I can do now. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about how it's gonna make new projects easier and how I'm going to be able to do different things for new projects. I can't wait to see where my mind goes with this because of this. So thank you again, Kurt87, and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day, have an amazing one. Stay positive, stay beatable. Bye, y'all!